Hello, Aries. And I hope you are doing so well as we enter 2022. I know for me, like sitting down to do these readings, I just going to see what comes out of my mouth. Um, I feel really strongly about something. And it's a, it's a key note in all the readings for the beginning of this year, which is that I don't want us coming into 2022 trying to control the unfolding of 2022 from a place of doing enough spiritual homework, setting enough intentions, and being enough in control of the situation. I want us to just immediately shake off that desire to map it out and just bring us back here for a moment, back here into this conversation. January is a really poetic month. Energetically speaking, it is one of the most poetic months I've seen in a long time. That is partially due to the fact that we have Venus retrograde in Capricorn, your fellow cardinal signs. So cardinal signs are feeling the energy of Venus retrograde in pretty deep ways and really reassessing what is nourishing and working for you. We have a Mercury retrograde beginning on the 14th in Aquarius. That Mercury retrograde will track back into Capricorn by the end of the month. So we're doing some review there as well. And as you know, I have a very strong opinion about Mercury retrograde, which is that this is not a thing to be feared. It doesn't necessarily mean everything's going to fall apart. It is a review process. It is about getting honest with ourselves. Similar to the way that Venus retrograde asks us, how we are nourishing ourselves, how we are nurturing ourselves. Mercury retrograde asks us how we're doing that in a practical way, how we're communicating that and how we're showing up to that. So we have those two retrogrades happening. The other big thing this month is that the North Node of the Moon is moving into Taurus. It's been in Gemini for a year and a half. So the North Node's moving into Taurus. The South Node is moving out of Sagittarius and into Scorpio. And this really changes the dynamic of what we as a bigger culture are uh, honoring, working towards, exploring. The North Node of Taurus is going to be for you all a time of really starting to look at your worthiness and your self-love. And the way that you treat yourself physically and creatively on any given day. And there's going to be a real emphasis on you working towards creating new themes and habits that reflect a sense of real self-worth without having to perform all the time, without having to be like on perfect areas behavior, which is championing everything and being at the front lines of everything. It's going to ask you to calm down and soothe yourself a little bit. Um, not to say that Aries needs to calm down. I mean, I love you all the way you are. You know that. That's not even a question for me. Like, I like Aries' go-getter, fiery attitude. It is one of my favorite qualities that you all have. It's something that lights me up. I love it. What I mean is you don't need to be at the front lines of everything all the time. That's what we're getting at here with the Taurus North Node. So this is a big month of transition, rebirth, shifting out. That's why I'm saying it's so poetic because it is a time to really get to just feel our way into these new patterns. And that's why I'm saying we don't want to really dive into January, like holding onto it tight. I'd almost say like, in some ways I feel like Lunar New Year is such a better New Year system, um, which I believe happens in February this year, right? Um, because it, it, it gives us a chance to feel into energy after the solstice and gives us a chance to explore what it is that we are working with and what it means to us, all of that. So there's a lot to cover in January. I'm not going to be able to get to it all in this discussion. Um, I'm trying to focus where it makes sense to focus. So one thing I wanted to say with all this energy moving through Capricorn and Aquarius we're going to be working for Aries a lot to do with community and friendship and what you want that to look like. And I feel like this is such an important topic. You know, it's one that so rarely gets addressed in like romantic movies and novels and things like that, where it's so much about the partnership, right? Which is an invaluable part of our lives too. But community and friendship is the thing that makes us 
our most human, our most beautiful, our most giving, our most compassionate, and where we get to explore and play with who we are in this life, right? And so there will be a lot of themes with Venus moving through Capricorn, with Mercury moving through both Aquarius and Capricorn, with the sun moving through Capricorn and Aquarius this month. There are going to be themes again and again for you as you're kind of looking around and taking in 2021. And just, this is just a theme for January. Um, what is it that you want your friendships and community to look like? Where is it working? Where are you wanting to maybe just invest a few more hours in that friendship? Where are you feeling like you've grown apart from friendships? Help yourself to heal and grieve that. The King of Wands came out. There's my Aries energy. Hello. Um, and what community and stability means to you. Now, this goes hand in hand with what we were talking about with the North Node for Aries when it comes to self-worth, self-value, feeling like worthy, even if you're not at the front of the line making everything happen. Do you feel valuable even when you're not the one making everything happen? Do you feel valuable when you take some time and you step back a little bit? Nine of Cups. Hi. I like it. Um, do you feel, do you feel worth existing without accomplishing all the time? That's going to be a theme that comes up again and again this year for you. So it's a, it's a, it's a good one. And believe me, as a fellow fire sign, <laughs> got a lot of Leo energy in my chart, um, Leo sun and, and more than that, Mars and Mercury. As a fire sign, believe me, I have had to spend years letting myself Ace of Cups, love myself when I haven't been my most productive, when I've needed to rest, when I've needed to take a break from a project. And it is a great, great process of learning, I think. And the sun, oh my gosh, Aries, y'all are like having a great time this month. These are amazing cards. I am not gonna argue with this, uh-uh. We're gonna pull one final card from my Animal Totem Tarot. Uh, just to give us a little different flavor in our conversation here today. And it is the two of pentacles. It's the hawk. We'll get into it. We'll get into this totem, totem card here in a moment. Okay, let's talk about this poetic wild month. Um, we have so much to, so much to explore here. All right. So while I was saying this month is very, reflective. There's a lot of reflective energy going on. There's a lot of, like I said, just taking stock, not trying to like have the year mastered by January 30th. <laughs> we figured it out. It's done. Um, it's really about getting in touch with ourselves, noticing how we feel um, in these new energetic transits. But what I'm seeing from these cards is that this is a very creative time for Aries. So we've got the King of Wands, one of my favorite cards. You know why I love this card? This is a guy who, this is an energy that is all about, he has a vision, he sees it, he's focused on it, he is going to do that thing. He feels that sense of assurance and confidence. Now, of course, the shadow side of this is that you can be a little bit too arrogant, um, stubborn, <laughs> a little stubborn, a little stuck on doing it your way, um, something to kind of just keep in mind. You know, you don't want to be steamrolling people and you know, trampling the world to get your way. But this is about an inner mastery. I think this is about a, a sense of being allowed to have those goals, have those ideas, have those places where you want to take a space and letting yourself have that first from within. And that's what I think King of Wands is really about. It's about a sense of worthiness and taking your space and in getting visionary hits and downloads. Because if there's one thing that the King of Wands is, he is a visionary creative. He's sitting up here on his pedestal, you know, looking out, looking ahead at the world. And that energy is very seductive and fun and playful. Now you also have these cups cards, nine of cups and ace of cups. I love this. Um, this heralds a couple things. Um, and it, it kind of speaks to an age old adage, which is, Nine of Cups is about resting back into our worthiness. Once again, this is about feeling safe, comforted, uh, like you don't have to be running around in circles in order to be loved, to be supported. It's an energetic state that I think, you know, even when 
if we have a problem with feeling that sense of security and love, even when we have like the best supportive partner, the best friends, a safe place to live, we have like what we need. It may be hard for us to get to the point where we feel like we can fully relax and release into it and just like feel the gratitude. And believe me, I've had times where this has happened because if, if you are like me in the past, when you're growing up or when you were younger, you may have had a time when it really never was safe. So it was like, you couldn't ever quite get there. Right. And so that loop, that wiring can sometimes make it a little tricky to reaccess this nine of cups energy. So if you're having that, just know you can practice into these new things. But if you're, you might not be like that, you might be able to totally like flourish in some supportive, loving energy. But the nine of cups is here to remind us to, to relax into that a little bit. You don't like while you have this king of wands, right? Activating that sense of creative power. You also want to make sure you're counterbalancing it here with this nine of cups of resting back into feeling the worthiness, feeling the comfort, feeling the safety, feeling the love, feeling it all. And what that's doing is opening up this new ace of cups door. Yes, this is often associated with new relationships, new love patterns, new exciting adventures with that. But this can also be about creativity as well, because really the image of the Ace of Cups is about a cup that is overflowing. It's a cup that is just so full of imagination and play and love that it just, I'm like, <laughs> while I'm talking about it, it just flows into all the next spaces of this life. And it's beautiful. There's some new chapters beginning. And we have the sun, our good friend, the sun. Uh, this is the energy of getting out there and playing and trying things. That is what it is. You know, it's so true that like when it's a bright sunny day, it can feel like you can just do anything, like just try it out and see what happens. Whereas when it's the middle of the night, we're a little more sensitive. We can be a little bit more cautious. And the sun for me is about just getting out there and trying the thing. One element I've noticed about January in general is that it starts off a lot more mystical, a lot more mysterious, a lot more about all of us kind of assessing, looking around, checking in with ourselves, going deep. By the end of January, as we close out Venus retrograde, as we start to get used to these different nodal points, as we start some new energetic cycles, because there really is a lot beginning in January, things start to get clear and movement starts to happen. Um, and so there's a real progression, a real natural progression from the beginning of January to the end of January. Um, and that makes sense. If we're in the Northern Hemisphere specifically, we've just been through the solstice, the light is slowly returning. And by the end of January, the light is actually changing because it doesn't really change most of January. It kind of stays stuck. Um, and then it starts to change really quickly. So then we have finally our two of pentacles, our dear friend, two of pentacles in the animal totem tarot. Now, this is really interesting. You know, the hawk here, hawks have this amazing sense of sight, right? Like they can see so amazingly in the dark and in little, all these little movements, right there, they have this amazing sense of sight and they can pick out the details of something, right? They can pick out what is right for them. And two of pentacles traditionally is all about decision-making and, and making the decision that is right and true for you not trying to wear every single hat, not trying to pick up everything, but being aware and insightful enough to know which coin you want to pick up. So this card to me is also denoting while we have all this fun, playful energy that is like create, connect, fall in love, begin new chapters, become that king of wands, do all of that. That's only going to happen. Here's what I'll say. It not, no, it's not only going to happen. It happens much easier when we allow ourselves to be ourselves. And we don't try to wear every hat. We don't try to wear every outfit, every 
face, every project, everything that we carry. More happens when we pick up less. And I think the Two of Pentacles is saying that here. Really use your inner sight to know what it is you want to pick up. Because it, the things that want to come with you on the journey and that want to work, it happens so much easier when we don't put ourselves through this thing of needing to be everything all the time. So I just want to reiterate that it's not that you're going to mess it up or that um, you're going to do it wrong. I think too, just as a note before we get to my final well wishes for this beginning of this new year, I just want to say um, I had a brief discussion about Venus retrograde on this channel, which you can check out here. But we're, you know, Venus retrograde has this reputation. And so does Mercury retrograde that you're not going to be able to trust yourself or others for the time that we are in a retrograde. Um, I don't think that's true. I think actually this is about getting more honest and more trusting of ourselves and taking actions that reflect that self-trust. So this is a time of amplifying that and really getting into the practice of, and you know, you can practice this with small things. It doesn't have to start off with the big conversations. It can be, do I really feel like going to have that coffee with that friend? Do I have the energy? Maybe I don't because it's January and I just need to rest for an afternoon. Do I really feel like going to the store and picking up all that stuff or would I rather just, you know, order some food in tonight? It starts small, but those moments where we betray ourselves and we say, oh no, I have to do it this way are the moments that we start to distance ourselves from ourselves. So this month is also a really important month for practicing really hearing ourselves in those times that are, I think, quote unquote, unimportant, that are actually really great little practice moments all the time throughout every day, woven into every day. I have just a quick uh, well wish to send your way for January. And here it is. Um, May this year be one of support and nurturance. May it be a time of resting when you need rest and burning bright when you feel the energy surge. May it be a year of rebalancing and finding your path. And may it be feel peaceful to choose your soul song. You know, there's nothing greater in the world than feeling that we are allowed to be ourselves. There's nothing wrong with who we are. We're not wrong for existing. We're not, we're not in trouble for existing. We are allowed to have that unique soul song. Doesn't mean we get to like, walk all over everybody, obviously, but it does mean that we get to be at peace in being ourselves. And that is what I wish for all of you. We are deep diving on all of the topics that I've talked about today. There's so much going on in January on my Patreon. So that's where I'm able to offer a lot of extra support and going really deep on these topics. If you're interested about learning about them, how to navigate them, how to work with them, tool sets, worksheets, conversations, it's a great community. So I'd love to see you there. And um, there are plenty of impersonators of me on Instagram and of all healers and people like me. There's just a ton of impersonators. There's only one at Sarah Verba. I'll leave the handle so you know exactly where to find me on Instagram. There's just the one and I'll never be reaching out to you sending like creepy texts and DMs to you. Um, you can also find me on my website. So I'll leave all of those links below so you know exactly where to find me. I will see you very soon, my beautiful Aries friends. Have a gorgeous beginning to 2022 and see you around here very, very soon. I do do hope you'll stick around.